Ibrahim Mustafa is a highly sought after figure in the world of public speaking with over 30 books and years of experience as a coach, keynote speaker and author. He has established a reputation for delivering dynamic and engaging presentations. This combined with his work with prestigious organizations such as Astana Expo, World Economic Forum and Google has earned him a place among the most respected names in the industry. However, B. Ibrahim's impact extends far beyond the world of public speaking. He is also a philanthropist at heart, actively supporting numerous charitable projects and working tirelessly to make a positive impact in the world. Whether you're looking for an inspiring keynote speaker, a skilled public speaking coach, or an expert in the firm, Ibrahim Mustafa is the perfect choice. Don't miss the opportunity to book him for your next event and discover the difference for yourself. With his expertise and passion for public speaking, Ibrahim is sure to make a lasting impact on your audience and make you a great speaker. All right, my name is Ibrahim Mustafa and I'm here. I'm your number one public speaking coach. And today, let's look at how we can knock out the fear in you. Sometimes you're afraid to speak in public. Why? The question is, why are you afraid to speak in public? You know that when you speak in public, there are a lot of opportunities that you can get, but you are still afraid to speak in public. Why? Even though you have all the certifications, you've gone to school, you have PhD, some of you have even master's, PhD, but you are still afraid to speak in public. But on Facebook, you can post a lot of things. And once they call you to speak, you are afraid. Why? That's the question. Today, let's knock out the fear and help you speak in public of power and help you do more with the power of your voice. Your voice is important and you can create opportunities for you just speaking. Let me repeat this. You can create a lot of opportunities for you just by the power of your voice. And there are a lot of things that you can do to help you speak in public, speak in power, speak of opportunities and create opportunities for yourself. So why don't you feel like you can speak? Why do you shiver? Why do you shake? So today we are going to delve into some one or two things that can help you and position you to help you in your next presentation. So if you are here, you have questions, my PC is ready. You can ask all the questions that you have and now you'll be able to get that on. Shakul, Sani, thank you very much for doing the monitor on YouTube. Thank you. So you can also put, bring in your questions, bring in your quest. If you have questions as to how you can speak in public. Today, let's knock out the fear and help you speak in public of power. If you can hear me live, uh, loud and clear, just type in yes, so that I would know because I'm live on YouTube, I'm live on LinkedIn, and I'm live on Facebook. Very soon, I will be live on TikTok. So if you are monitoring in any part of the world, just type in yes for me to know that you are monitoring. Thank you for sharing this because I can share this to a lot of people, but you have the opportunity and you can share this on my behalf. I believe in you and I believe in the power of your dreams. So there are things that you can do to speak in public. The first thing I want you to know is that you need to lead who you want to be. I've done this before, but I want to repeat this again, so that you get to appreciate that to speak in public, you need to be enough, take action, create that opportunity, and create that rapport. I just want to hide and let you know, speaking in public is possible. You can do it. There are people you are better than who are speaking in public, and some of them are even leading you. But because you are not able to to speak in public because you are afraid to stand in front of people, you are not getting the promotions, you are not getting all the opportunities just because you are afraid to speak in public. So if you have questions, you can let the questions come, let the questions flow. But there are things that you need to do to speak in public. There are things that can help you speak in public. Number one is that you need to appreciate the fact that you can do more. You need to create your rapport. You need to create yourself. You need to know that, yes, everybody is naked in terms of when we were born. But growing up, we started putting on clothes. So it, it, this tells you something, that yes, we can all make mistakes. We all started from zero, and we are here. So don't be afraid to make mistakes. Your grammar may not be good. 
but you should still make efforts to speak. And that's the importance of public speaking. Number one thing I want you to appreciate is that you need to take charge of you. You need to make a conscious effort to speak in public. It's you against you. It's you versus you. It's you against whatever you want to do in life, whatever your purpose is. You can make that difference if you stand and say, I want to stay the affairs of my life. I want to create opportunities for me, and I want to take myself to the next destination. So that's what I want you to know, that yes, to speak in public, you need to be conscious about it. You need, you need to be deliberate about it. And you need to know that yes, it's you versus you. So you need to lead. So public speaking is about leadership. You need to take that initiative. You need to stand up and say, I want to lead my life. I want to lead my speaking opportunities. And I want to create speaking opportunities for myself. So number one, you need to lead. Number two is that you need to appreciate that yes, it's not about leading. It's not about standing in front of the people. You must have a goal. What do you want to achieve? What are some of the things that you want to achieve in this world? What are some of the things that you feel like, wow, if I do them, I can create that rapport. I can create that opportunity for me. So you need to be conscious about that. You need to set goals. As a speaker, you need to know that, oh, I want to do like two speaking engagements in a month. I want to do three speaking engagements in a month. Or in a year, I want to do like 200 speaking engagements. So once you have a target, you know that this is where you are going to start from. And once you know that this is where you are going to start from, it helps you to do more. It helps you to create more opportunities. It helps you to show up. It helps you if you are even not feeling good, you have to show up and do it. Because if you don't do it, no one will do it for you. If you don't do it, who do you expect to do it for you? And that is the power that you have. You need to understand that, yes, to be able to speak in public, you need to take your own destiny into your own hands. Create opportunities, create rapport, and do it. So create, set targets, and achieve those targets. As a speaker, you need to volunteer, show up. It's not easy for you to just sit at home and say, I want to speak, I want to speak. No, you have to show up. Create opportunities to speak. One of them is that I'm speaking live on Facebook. I'm speaking live on Insta Instagram. I'm speaking live on LinkedIn. And I'm on different platforms. And I'm creating opportunities for me to speak. Yes, you are still going to make those mistakes. Yes, you are still going to uh, make memo. Yes, you are still going to go through tough times. Yes, sometimes you feel like, oh, it's tough. People will judge you. Yes, because I don't know who is watching. I know I have a lot of uh, followers watching on TikTok. I have a lot of followers watching on different platforms, but I don't know how they are judging me. But I don't even need to know how they are judging me. All I need to know is, am I making impacts in their lives? Am I giving them the opportunities that they want to speak in public? Am I helping someone to dream again? This is all what I ask myself. So you need to ask yourself those questions. And the more you ask yourself those questions, you can be able to speak and do more. So number one is you need to lead. Number two is that you need to set targets for you. And let's go for a commercial break. Once we are back, we'll take it to another level by creating more opportunities. Ibrahim Mustafa is a highly sought after figure in the world of public speaking with over 30 books and years of experience as a coach, keynote speaker and author. He has established a reputation for delivering dynamic and engaging presentations. This combined with his work with prestigious organizations such as Astana Expo, World Economic Forum, and Google has earned him a place among the most respected names in the industry. However, B. Ibrahim's impact extends far beyond the world of public speaking. He is also a philanthropist at heart, actively supporting numerous charitable projects and working tirelessly to make a positive impact in the world. Whether you're looking for an inspiring keynote speaker, a skilled public speaking coach, or an expert in the firm, Ibrahim Mustafa is the perfect choice. Don't miss the opportunity to book him for your next event and discover the difference for yourself. With his expertise and passion for public speaking, Ibrahim is sure to make a lasting impact on your audience and make you a great speaker. Right, welcome back, and uh, we are still practicing our public speaking, how to speak of power, how to speak and create opportunities for ourselves. 
So let's go straight. And we talk about how to lead your speaking journey. The second thing we talk about is to set targets for you to show up, to volunteer, and to find public speaking opportunities so that you can speak more. So there are a lot of things that you can do. And one of them is that you need to know what you actually want. So as a speaker, you need to know that, okay, I'm going to do leadership. I'm going to create opportunities. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Victoria. Uh, thank you very much. I appreciate that. So as a speaker, you need to know your target. You need to know that this is what you want to do. And you need to do something specific. Bring out your name. So if you are starting, you, don't, you can't do everything. Right. So if you are starting, you are tempted to do, OK, I want to be a public speaking coach. I want to do a leadership. I want to be a leadership coach. I want to do A, B, C, D. And you feel like any opportunity that comes, you will be able to do that. But what you are doing is that you're not giving people the opportunity to book you for services. Because once they are booking, they take into consideration that, OK, we want someone who is a leadership expert. So once they say leadership expert, they, they are looking for a specific person. But if you are doing different programs, you are, you are leadership, you are into marketing, you are into sales, you are into customer service, it may be difficult for them to book you. And that's the re hard reality that you must face. As a speaker, you need to know that, yes, this is what I'm doing, this is what I have, and this is my strength. If you start with that, later you can choose to go and do other things now i can do entrepreneurship trainings next week i'm going to do next month rather i'm going to do leadership somewhere i'm going to do different projects but they know me for public speaking even though i'm going to do public speaking there but i'm still going to do one or two things that at that particular event but the main call card was public speaking so know what you want to do and know what you want to talk about as a speaker you need to be specific if you're a CEO, you can speak on different things because they are calling you, you are using the CEO call card to invite you to speak. But as a speaker who is growing up, pick something and let them know you for that. And once they know you for that, then you can start venturing into other uh, areas. Even if you are going into those areas, but still make sure that your branding is tailored towards one thing. And so that if someone is looking for speakers from America, they can land on you. If someone is looking for speakers from Europe, they will be able to see your name. It happens. And uh, I get calls from people just because of my book, The Confident Speaker. People get that book and they feel like, oh, let's invite him to speak because of that book. And that tells you how important even a book can help promote you as a speaker. Your book can make a difference in your speaking journey. And if you want to topple it up, you can add an online course. So I have an online course. If you go, you can get my online course. And uh, once you get my online course, just I don't know where you are monitoring from, whether LinkedIn, whether YouTube, whether Facebook, but there's a link that you can get to enroll in my online course. And the online course will give you a lot of opportunities that you can sit in your room and learn how to speak of confidence. Don't be afraid. You can still do that and you get opportunity to, to reach out to me if you finish the online course and get your certification. So I'm just trying to let you know that as a speaker, know what you want and know what you're going for. And that is important. Know what you are going for specifically. So if you know that it's going to help you. Thank you to all those who are sharing and uh, thank you to all those who are also liking and also if you can send me a message too, it will help a lot of people to discover this. But thank you for the shares and thank you for the watch, uh, watch time that you are giving me on YouTube and the watch time that you are giving me on different platforms. I'm live on YouTube. I'm live on TikTok. I'm live on, I'm live on, uh, I've even lost count of the number of places I'm live on. But as a, as a speaker, you need to pick yourself up. You need to build on and know what you want from the beginning. Once you know what you want, you can go for it and do more. And then like after two years, you can rebrand and do other things, but then let people know you for one thing. For me, public speaking is what they know me for. I know someone who is a Bernard, Bernard a BKC is known for branding. So, they are, so it's important that you build on something, leverage on something and know that this is your call card. This is your call card. So as a speaker, it helps. It helps. So the number 13 you need to know is that you need to build yourself. After knowing what you want to go into, you need to brand yourself. You need to create yourself. And, and the important thing is that the pain 
of creating who you are is very important. There's, there's pain in that. It's difficult. Like, you just want to create, 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 like, maybe boxing, maybe speaking. You need to, like, knock out your fear of speaking first. But you need to create who you are. You need to brand yourself. You need to let people know you. And that investment is painful. To be frank, it's very painful. If you want to brand yourself, if you want to, like, create that path for you. Because there are things that you want, and maybe you need to get a website. Maybe you need to consistently post on social media. The pain is too much, to be, to be honest with you. If you don't understand this, you may not get it right. There's a, there's a particular a certain pain that you have to feel, tough times that you have to, troubles, just to make sure that you keep that brand. Because branding is important. If you cannot keep on building on your own brand, no one will do it for you. So there's a lot of pain in branding yourself. To be frank, there's a lot of pain in doing that because there are things that will happen on social media and you feel like just posting on them. You just want to post. Anything that happens, you want to post. Sometimes, if you don't have that discipline, you will keep on posting on unnecessary things. And if you don't take time, you are going to lose your brand in the process. I've seen a lot of speakers, like in the space of 10 years, I've seen a lot of speakers come of energy and they are lost. Why? Because they can't discipline themselves. They can't discipline themselves in terms of posting or what they have to post to brand themselves. So they just jump into anything. Today, I was tempted to post on the issue of the aggregate 34 or 30, that woman who was complaining. And I feel like I had to post on that. But I feel like, to what excess? To what, why should I post on that? So sometimes it's difficult like to keep, to restrain from posting things that are happening in your society, but it also helps you because there are a lot of people who will follow you and they are following you for one or two things. And if you let go of that following, they will lose interest in you. And once you even speak, you don't have that strength. On my uh, Facebook, if you check my followers, people who follow me, I have like the US um, uh, embassy following me. I have different embassies following me. I have important people like ministers, member of parliaments, not only for Ghana, but from different countries following me. So sometimes I feel like you need to post on one or two things happening in society. But I feel like, no, why should I post on that? Will that serve my audience in the long term? And sometimes when I even post, and, and this is what you need to know. Yes, there's a discipline to post. And sometimes you may even forego that discipline because you like discipline and you post. When someone complains about that, don't hold on to yourself and say, oh, I can do whatever I want. Just go and delete it. There are times I just post something and someone will call me or send me a message on my inbox and say, oh, I am. This is like, you don't have to post that. Then quickly I'll go and delete it. I wanted it to be there, but because someone has seen a fault in that, I just quickly go and delete it. And I respect those people. So there are a group of people who I know. And once they see my post, they don't comment. They don't like it. But they advise me, oh, this post is okay. This is, And that is a discipline. So as a speaker, for people, big organizations to be able to book you, you need to be consistent, especially if you have a page. So you should know the type of even pages to have on social media. If it's a Facebook, if it's Facebook, you can use your profile. You can also use your, your profile to do like football things. I, sometimes my prof, personal profile, I use that for football, Ronaldo. I like Ronaldo and some of the artists I like. I just post them, make fun and market even to move. But on my personal, like professional page, there's a lot of limitations there. There are a lot of things that I can't post there just because I want that to portray my brand. On LinkedIn, the things I post on LinkedIn, uh, on Facebook, I can never post them on uh, Facebook. The things I post on Facebook, I can't post them on LinkedIn because there are a lot of professional people on my LinkedIn page and I don't want to get them distracted. So as a young uh, speaker, you need to understand this. You need to appreciate that. What you post can make you or unmake you. It's technology. People who are going to hire you will not ask you first before hiring you. No. They will have to go through your Facebook. You have to go through your LinkedIn. And that is why I know all the organizations that book me for public speaking, I see some of their staff 
on LinkedIn. You know, when someone looks at your profile on LinkedIn, you're going to see the person's name and the organization they are coming from. So I know that just before they book you, before they even hire you, they have to do background analysis on you. And if you are not relevant on social media, forget it. You may have the talent, you may have all what it takes to be able to make it, but then if you don't have that consistency on social media, forget that. So as a speaker, you need to create yourself. You need to brand yourself. You need to do one or two basic things. Maybe if you have a book, like this book, it's my first book, it's going to help you, to be frank. Uh, you don't have a choice. If you want to do it for a long term, you need to publish books. And that is why your pastors keep publishing books because they want to be in the industry. They want to be in the game for long. So if you also want that to brand yourself easily, you have to write some ideas. You don't necessarily need to write everything out. You just have, you can have a skeletal idea of your book and someone will sit down and listen to it and write that. We have a lot of ghost writers who can write for you. But if you have the time, like me, just prepare your book, write it, re read through it, give it to professionals to read through, proofread, and you publish that. Do the cover and you publish that. And it's going to help you as a speaker to do that. So let's move to the next chapter. So thank you for all those who are monitoring. Thank you, Victoria Maverick. Thank you for supporting Shakul. Shani, thank you very much. I can't see a lot of names because I'm using an interface that I just have to go on live on YouTube, LinkedIn, and all the Facebook pages I have. So I can't see all your names. If you want me to see your name, please put in a comment and just send a hi or like this or share this so that I can get to be able to see your name. And thank you to all of you for joining my feed. So next chapter is you need to brand and you need to, uh, like, let me take this picture off. So you need to brand yourself. You need to stand out from the crowd. You need to stand out from the crowd. So that, that is, this is important. You need to know that, yes, to be able to do it, you need to stand out from the crowd. Like, there's a crowd there. You need to stand out. You need to let people know. It's the same thing as branding, but you need to just be conscious about that. You need to stand out. You need to let people know what you do, right? Once they come to your page, once they come to your life, there should be something different that they see that they want to bring you on. There should be something unique that they see that they want to bring you on. There are a lot of people, speakers that I know, and they once they see someone doing something that's working for them, they quickly rush and do that. You are not going to stand out from there because you are doing piecemeal type of things. Speaking is evergreen. Evergreen simply means that if you pick leadership, if I pick public speaking and I do content on public speaking, it's going to be evergreen. Anytime someone watches that content or reads my content, it's still going to be relevant. And that is the power of speaking that you can emulate. Do what you want. Do what you are, you are passionate about. Be specific about that and learn to stand out from the crowd. Learn to stand out from the crowd. This is important. You need to learn to stand out and do what you want to do. Be you. Be unique to you. Be unique to yourself and stand out from the crowd. So as a speaker, you need that kind of specificity to be able to do more and to create that rapport. And self-confidence is key. You need to build your confidence. It matters not who you are or what you do. Your confidence will help you stand out on stage, speak with power, your confidence will help you do more. The more you are confident, the more you are able to leverage on that. So it's all about self-confidence, believing in yourself, creating opportunities for you, creating that rapport to be able to do more. So as a speaker, your confidence can make you or make you. Confidence simply means that you stand in front of people, 10,000 people, you are afraid, but you do it anyway. You want to even start a business, you are afraid to start that business, or you do it anyway. You have self-confidence, believing in yourself, and telling yourself that everything is going to be all right. Everything is going to be possible. Everything will be just fine. And that's what you need to have as a speaker. So there are a lot of ways you can build your confidence. And one of the ways is to practice your self-confidence. Practice showing up. Practice looking in the mirror. Practice doing videos. Practice reaching out to people, practice volunteering and creating opportunities 
for you to be able to do more. So your self-confidence will help you. When you step into the room, everybody should notice that you have that confidence and you can do more. So there's a course, public speaking course, and uh, you can enroll in that course, my course, which is the I Am Master class. Get a certificate on that and let's move on. You can get a certificate to do more and you can create that opportunity for yourself. My name is Ibrahim Mustafa. I'm your number one public speaking coach. You can also join my linked uh, Telegram practice group whereby I do videos every day and I share them on my Telegram. It's a special group for a VIP group for my members. So you can also be part of that and we get to interact, we get to communicate and we get to do more. So join that Telegram group. If you also have that fear, see, like most of you are afraid to speak in public. And it's, it's funny how a lot of people are getting opportunities, promotion just by speaking in public. People are getting into politics just because they are able to stand in front of you and speak to you. And they give them ministry appointments and you are there. You're talented. You have all it takes. And you can't even speak in public. You're afraid to speak in public. So I want you to know that if you join my public speaking masterclass, you are going to knock out your fear of public speaking. You have to knock it out. You have to do it. You have to be conscious about that. Knock that fear out of your you. You have to knock it out. So enroll in that public speaking course. And it's, it's two, I don't know the price in Ghana cities, but it's like it's 2,000 cities. And there's a discount on it. Check on that. If you are uh, in the US, in Europe, it's 199 US dollars and it's worth it because you have a degree, you've gone to school, but you can't even speak in public. You have all this investment, you have people, and some of you, you have the network. If you can pitch your business ideas to people, they are going to give you the money, the resources that you need. They are going to support you, but you don't have that. You don't have that. You don't have that responsibility. You cannot speak. Thank you very much, my brother, Magbash. It's been two days. It's true. I've been recording videos and doing one or two things. That's why. But then today we are here to knock out the fear of public speaking. So whoever you are, you need to knock that fear out. I'm telling you, you need to knock that fear out. Because think about this. Public speaking can help you change your own life. I'm speaking. I'm just sitting down here and it's all about public speaking. I'm doing training programs. I have my online course, which I'm inviting you to go and enroll in, which is $199. If two people buy this, in a month, I'm good to go. So public speaking can give you opportunities. It can help give you a job. But all you just need to do is the first starting. Knock it out. Learn how to practice. Learn how to do more. And my course can give you that. So if you join my course one-on-one, -on -one, and I don't do one-on-one -on -one trainings these days. I don't do one-on-one -on -one trainings these days because it's tiring and uh, you have to go through a lot of like. So I do group coaching. So if you have a group that you want to coach, you can bring them on and I'll coach them. In these days, I don't joke. I have to knock the fear out of that. It's not fighting. No, it's not fighting. I have to use one or two techniques to knock the fear out of your group. That's what I do. That's what I'm known for. So enroll in uh, my course. If you go through the link, whether on uh, YouTube or LinkedIn or Facebook, you could get the group link and enroll in that particular public speaking one of, uh, public speaking coaching which is the IM Masterclass. You get certificate for that. Thank you, AG. Thank you. If you also need uh, like services in terms of your CVs, if you want to get a professional CV, basic things you have to, you can contact AG Professional Services. They do a lot of consultancy and they will be able to help you do that. Thank you very much, AG, for monitoring. Uh, you can see your branding now is solid. Everybody who sees that with the AG professional services is in the house. But let's move on and let's knock out the fear out of you to speak in public. So it's about building your confidence. But then you need to know that, yes, your story matters. Your story, the story that you have can make a difference. Your story can make a lot of difference. The story that you have, uh, but I want to repeat this. Your story will make a lot of difference. Some of you, you've gone through a lot rough path in life. Some of you have gone through tough times. Some of you have beautiful stories that the world needs, but you are not telling those stories. I just want to urge you that. You need to use your story. As a speaker, stand out 
and use the power of your story. Let people know that this is what you've gone through. If we are able to tell our stories very well, I'm telling you, Ghana will be good. Ghana will be a great country. And I want to tell you one or two things. The countries that you know that are great countries are the countries that are able to tell their stories. Most of you, there are a lot of people who don't even know Dubai. But you want to go to Dubai. Why do you want to go to Dubai? Just because you've heard stories about Dubai. You've seen uh, like a story representation of Dubai, maybe through images, through uh, like videos. You've seen people go to Dubai and they've taken pictures. These are all pict uh, pictorial evidence of their stories. They've been able to capture stories using pictures. They've been able to use stories using videos tell their own story, their own identity, and what they have. They may have great things, maybe that you go to see the Burj Khalifa and all those things, but then it's just storytelling. If we can tell our own stories, we can create opportunities. I'm telling you, people will be coming out from Europe to from America. They just come and they want to go to Tumu and see the stories that are in Tumu. And I want to tell you that sometimes it's not about how thick the story is, People believe in it based on who is telling those stories. Of late, I've been posting videos. I just picked those videos, uh, pictures about even different countries, animals, and I'm sharing them. I say Tumu. And do you believe that people go to Tumu just to see how Tumu is because of the hype I'm giving Tumu? And that is what I understand. And it's given me that opportunity to leverage and know that the way you tell your story matters. People will buy into your story. If they don't buy into your story, they will not come to see your country. And if they come to see your story, they can help make your story better and your country better. And that's why people, countries like Dubai, US, they are marketing people, they are marketing to people to come to their countries. So when you check on, even when you type in Dubai once, you are going to constantly see Facebook advertisement about Dubai, how nice Dubai is, the properties they have in Dubai, and other things, just because you type in Dubai on your Google browser. So they want to, they are paying to market their country. So because they have a story, we have a story. I have a story, you have a story. It's left one to us to market it. If we don't market the story of Africa, if we don't market the story of Ghana, no one will be interested. Let me tell you this, if we don't take conscious methods to make market and brand our country, no one will be interested in coming to our country. In the past few weeks, I've been marketing the story of Ibrahim Mahama and his art center in Tamale. And do you believe that people travel from USA? They, they just pick a plane and they travel all the way from US and they drop down to Tamale just to know what has informed Ibrahim Mahama to go and buy old trains. What has informed him, the artist, Ibrahim Mahama, to go and buy a uh, all aeroplanes and go and turn them into classrooms. People just travel from universities and come to Tamale just to see that particular thing alone. So it's about how you market your story. It's about the, what you tell people about your story. So as a speaker, you need to learn to tell your own story on stage. A lot of speakers don't get called back because you don't tell your story well. So people don't know who you are. So you go and just speak. You don't even market your product. You don't market your brand. You don't tell your own story. So as a speaker, you need to learn to tell your story. Your story is old, but people are interested to hear that. Your story is interesting, and people will like that. Your story is impactful, and people will use the power of your story to change themselves. What changes people is the stories you tell them. Whether you're selling a product or service, it's all about the story you tell about the product or services. So if I want to tell the story of AG professional services, you need to know that yes, you need to hammer on the story and look at what people are missing by not having CV services. So if I want to market this story, I'll be able to stand and tell people that, look, there are a lot of opportunities that you are missing, not because of your certificate, not because of who you are, but because you are not even able to package your CV to tell your story. So based on that, I, who is a part of AG or AG Professional Services, can give you a better CV, can help you. And this is something that is as basic as a CV is. Ministers, uh, like 
don't even have correct CVs. So you see, when they want to in, uh, interview them or that service they do when they appoint them and they want to give them the opportunity, you see them running around looking for CVs or people to even correct their CVs, right? When they are vetting ministers, you see petty, petty mistakes on their CVs and they use them to quiz them. Why? Because they've not taken time to prepare their CV. And like many of us, we complain that there are no jobs. It's true. But your CV can also help you not to get a job. If your CV is crap, a lot of grammatic errors, you may not get a call back. So learn to tell your story. Learn to be original. Learn to be authentic. Whether you are running a business, whether you're running a country like Ghana, whether you're running your personal brand, you need to learn to tell your good story. And it's not all about good stories. You can tell the good, the bad, and the ugly. The good, bad, ugly. And it helps you to be able to do more. So storytelling is key in public speaking. The moment you start to tell your stories, you can change people. And you can create opportunities. If you have questions, you can always ask those questions for me to answer. If you also have suggestions, if you also have some opinions, you can put them in the comment section. I don't know where you're monitoring from. I'm live on YouTube. I'm live on uh, Instagram, live on TikTok, and live on different platforms. So you can also put in your questions, and I will be able to ask uh, to answer some of the questions that you have. But my name is Ibrahim Mustafa. There's a course on online, public speaking course online. It's not, it's not up to one, one hour, 30 minutes, but it's something that can help you. It's a course that can help you speak in public. I'm telling you this. It's a course that can help you speak in public. So let's move to the next chapter, which is you need to learn a skill. And this is not only peculiar to public speaking. It's all about like what you want to do in life and how you want to create that rapport to do whatever you want to do in life. So you need to learn a skill. So as a speaker, I learn different skills. It could be digital marketing. It could be how to brand yourself. It could be how to even play the piano. It could be how to play boxing. I'm going to, I'm looking for some people, some people in 2023 to knock them out, their fear. It could be that, just learn how to do it. It could be Taekwondo. It could be how to speak a, a different language. It could be how to create opportunities for yourself in terms of using different learners, different chapters uh, to do that. So you can do more. You can do more when you learn a skill. So don't just relax and feel like, oh, me, um, my name is Ibrahim Mustafa. Everything is moving on. No, everything is not moving on well. You need to learn. Keep learning. I learn digital marketing almost every day. How to reach out, how to do videos, how to record my own videos, how to edit videos. I know basic things like that. So that if I give my orders to people, I know that, yes, this is what I want because I know how to do it basically. But that will not mean that I should do everything. No, but learn to outsource, but then learn to also get into it, learn a new skill, create opportunities. It could be a new language. It could be a new technique. It could be something new that you don't even know. It could be how to even write proposals. You can learn from people who are writing. Just contact them and book one-on-one. -on -one. How to write a better CV, I can contact uh, AG services and they'll teach me that and I'll pay, right? But learn to invest in that. Don't just want everything for free. Learn to pay for some of the services that you are going to get. So it's important to learn a skill and have on that skill. Thank you very much, uh, AG. Thank you, I appreciate too. But this is... The I am masterclass, and uh, we talk about public speaking and how you can become a better speaker, how you can use leverage on your voice to do more. The other thing is that if you want to do things online, you need to invest in the technologies. And that's the honest truth that some people don't want to understand. You need to invest in the right technologies. You need to invest in a lot of things. Like I, I, I bought a lot of things that I don't even know. Some of them, I don't need them. But I have to invest in them because I feel like, oh, I want to use this. And sometimes I just use this for once. For like this, this, thing, this thing I just went and bought. It's just for videos, like some of my TikTok videos. But I just have to invest in that yesterday. And it tells you that if you don't invest, you will never make the returns that you want to make. And that is the difference between Ghana music and Nigerian music. 
there are a lot of artists who will come from Nigeria and come here to invest in their songs, to market their songs. But Ghanaian artists are big enough to sit down, no investment, all their investment is just to go on to the studio, record a song, come out, and that's why you see them beefing each other to get hype and popularity, because they are not investing the right things. They are not even doing marketing. They are not promoting their songs themselves. So as a young Ghanaian, I'm telling you, as a speaker, learn to invest in you. If it is doing promo, promotions, ads, do it. There are times I just go to radio stations, TV stations, and I pay for them to play some of my videos. I play any video you see online, on TV, from the, like the last two months, I invested in doing that. It's an educational content, and I pay for them to play it because I want to uh, let people see what I'm doing. So if you don't invest, don't expect any returns. If you don't invest, don't expect any returns. So you need to invest in you. You need to be conscious about that. You need to be conscious about that. The other thing that you need to appreciate is that you need to go global. As a speaker, you need to go global or go home. You have to go global or go home. Go global or go home. If you are not willing to invest and get into the next market, if you are not willing to talk about, have a conversation about how you can send your services to U.S., how you can send your services to Europe, forget about this. Forget about, forget about whatever you are doing because you are not going to make any impact. You make local impact, but you're not going to get the money to continue to make impact. So what I want you to know is that as a speaker, learn to go global. Learn to create opportunities so that, so that people in U.S. can buy your courses. There are a lot of people who buy my books from Europe. I'm telling you, the number of people who have bought my books in U.S. is times like 20 times more than the people who have bought my books in Ghana. I'm, I can tell you this for a fact. So why is this happening? Because I'm marketing that. I'm marketing my books and services to the people in U.S. Because they have the money to be able to what? buy my books. They can buy my book for $19. This is the same book. I'm selling this book in town for uh, 20 cities. 20 cities. 25, 20 cities, 30 cities. And people with their print, see? And the difference is that I've printed this book. And I'm selling that for 20, 30 cities. And people still complain before they buy. But the same book, I'm selling it for $19. That is hardcover. And uh, 16 or $9.9, .9, that's so, uh, like the soft type of cover, which is the paper, we call that paperback on Amazon. And they had the KDP version, the Kindle version is like $2.99. And they still buy this book more than the people who have even printed this book, uh, make return, the only return I'll make is maybe five series out of that. But on Amazon, I don't print that. So I'm telling you all this technique for you to know that, yes, having a book is okay, but it's just to show people, if you're having a book in Ghana, this is my honest assessment. I don't know people like uh, Mensa Otabel, the pastors, they make a lot of money from because they have radio audience. But I don't see any author in Ghana selling books like physically and making more money out of it. To be honest with you, the printing cost and stuff, no, you can't make like much margins. But I can still make money just using the soft cover, putting that on Amazon and marketing it to people to buy global. So I can do that. So if you go to my YouTube, you are going to see all my books. I've compiled all my books in one URL and I'm sending it to people and they are buying. So as a speaker, you need to do that. You need to have global products. You need to have things that you can be able to reach out to and easily sell. If they buy one, it should make a difference in you. Like my course like this. Uh, let me check by now. Some people have even bought those courses. So go on. You can sell things. Sell. Don't be afraid to sell. Don't be afraid to sell products and services. Don't be afraid to sell an online course. Don't be afraid to create opportunities for you and be able to go global. And that's the importance of this. Go global or go home. There's nothing that we can talk about which is negotiable about this. You need to go global. And sometimes... This is my honest assessment. Some of us, because of where we are coming from, we feel like, oh, who am I to even send book, sell books in U.S.? 
Who am I to sell books in Europe? Who am I for people to buy my courses? I want you to know that you are somebody. And you can make a difference. So don't give up on you. Don't give up on you. Don't second guess. Put it there. Pray about it. Things will happen. Pray about it. Things will happen. I'm telling you, put it. Yours is just to publish the book. Publish. I didn't know that people will even buy this book. Even in Ghana, I was doubting. I didn't know that they would buy this book. But I just put it out there. And now I have close to 30 books. More than even 30 books. And I'm selling. They are buying books every day. They buy one a day, two a day. Sometimes you just wake up and boom, someone buys 20 copies. On Amazon, I don't have to print it. They, Amazon will print it, send it to the person, and give me my money. They, they will take their printing cost. Uh, to print a paperback is two do, uh, it's one point something something dollars. And I'm selling it for $19.99. So if they take the two or one point whatever dollars, and they also take the 30% commission, and I take the rest. So you see, it's not something that is rocket mass. Just put it there, promote it one or two days, go onto Pinterest, use LinkedIn, use social media, promote your books, promote your services, promote yourself, and you will be getting to where you want to get to. So I'm urging you as a speaker or whatever services that you are doing now, think about how you can take it to the next level. Think about how you can take it to Europe, how you can take it to uh, Asia, how you can take your services to places like UAE, Dubai, how you can take your speaking services to America, whereby you sit in your room and you get a peop- uh, like a group of students and you train them. It happens to me. I'm doing it and you can do it. Doing it and you can do it. And sometimes I just sit down and I search for schools, maybe universities in US, universities in Europe, and I just look for their student leadership and I send them letters. Oh, I'm a public speaking coach. I can coach your uh, students. I can train your students about how to speak in public and stuff. And they look at my profile and they'll give me a trial. So I sit in my room and I do trainings and I take some small amount of money. But it's something that you have to do consistently. Don't do it once and things are tough and you stop. The civil uh, service type of ways. Thank you very much. We have uh, my brother coming in, Yusuf Bilal. Uh, If you see my videos, he has been helping me with my videos. And the background that you see, we set it up. And he is in charge of that. So if you want video services for your NGO, if you want video services for your products or services, if you just want video services, reach out to Yusuf Bilal and he's going to help you with that. So we need to grow global. We need to, to be consistent. We need to be conscious about that. And we need to keep believing in ourselves. Don't doubt yourself. Keep pushing. Things may be tough. Things may be hard. But you can do it. To be frank, you can do it. So never give up on you. As a young, young African there are things people will not tell you. And you may think that everything is okay, but everything is not okay. okay. I'm telling you, everything is not okay. You need to take yourself out of whatever you are going through. You need to be conscious about it. Wake up and seek to make yourself better. Wake up and seek to make things better for you. Because I'm telling you that when you are challenged or you go through some challenges, that you know that everything is not okay. But we can do it. We can do it. Thank you very much. My name is Brian Mustafa. Check my course online. Join my Telegram group. Yes, there are links that you can check all of this. And you can also follow me on TikTok. Just type my name, Brian Mustafa. And also, you can follow me on Instagram, on YouTube. Send me a direct message and let's do my believe in you. And may God keep blessing you. Thank you very much. Let's do this again tomorrow or tomorrow next, or any day, but then keep enjoying the videos, keep following me, and let's do more. Thank you to UC Black, thank you to AG Professionals, Abdul Gafar, thank you to Magbash, and thank you to all the people. Victoria Maverick, thank you to Shaku uh, Sani, thank you very much for the support and for joining. I was live on YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, TikTok, and any platform that you can think about. Thank you. 
Let's do this.